Greetings, I'm Frederick, the Micro Hobbyist. In this fourth episode, I'll communicate with the Logic Spark 09 with a serial port and a few lines of code. Take out your breadboards, as it's time to unleash the 6309. Sorry for being away for so long. You know, life. Uh, that and I worked on the project faster than I could dish out videos. Anyway, last time we took the retro computer project to its next logical step by installing a flash memory, added a static RAM, and weaving through the intricacies of decode logic with PLDs. This time I'm focusing on communication between the 6309 and the computer. I'll integrate an ACIA and program the necessary code to input and output characters to and from a terminal program. Let's decode the secrets of retrocomputing one byte at a time. The ACIA is an acronym for Asynchronous Communication Interface Adapter, also plainly known as a serial chip, will, for now, be the primary means of communicating with the retroboard. I'll be using a Rockwell R65C51 instead of the newer Western Design Center's WD65C51 due to the documented transmit bug. Although if you're going to use WDC's ACIA, you'll need to program an appropriate delay to replace the transmit buffer full register verification. The base address I'm using for the ACIA is FF68, to mirror the Kenton or Coco Microdrive cartridges, though I could use FF3C to mirror the Coco Deluxe's internal ACIA. I initially designed the transceiver section using the MCP2221A to have a USB connection to the computer, but I had some minor issues, so I went the good old fashioned RS232 route using a MAX232 transceiver instead. I may revisit implementing a USB port down the line. Any thoughts on that? As you can see, there's nothing out of the ordinary with this circuit. I'm using the recommended 1.8432 MHz crystal for baud rate generation. Other than that, the only thing to note is the IRQ line labeled IRQ4, which will be wired to the priority interrupt encoder. Like I mentioned earlier, I did go further in my build these past weeks than the scope of this video covers. Amongst other things, I now have a basic monitor program running. But to initially test the ACIA, I ran three simple subroutines. The initialization routine called COM1 init, basically performing a software reset, followed by setting up the registers to get 115 200 bits per second, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, no parity, and for the time being, disable the interrupts. After that, it's a matter of reading and writing a character to and from the console in loop. Outcar checks the transmit buffer. If it's full, it loops until the buffer is empty, and only then transmits a character stored in accumulator A. In car, checks the buffer receive flag and waits for a character to be in the buffer before loading it in accumulator A. As you can see, it's a fairly simple process. Let's have a look at the design on the breadboard. My usual mess of wires connects the ACIA's data bus, some address lines, and control lines to the CPU. The crystal is on the left. The RX, TX, CTS, and RTS lines go to the MAX232 transceiver on the right. On the other side of the transceiver is a DB9 breakout connector. And from there, I have an RS232 to FTDI cable that plugs into the computer's USB port. Here is the result on the terminal program. I'm using TerraTerm. Each character typed in the console window is read by the in-car subroutine. It is immediately outputted back to the console using the out-car subroutine. 
Don't mind the numbers preceding the greater than sign, it's just the prompt for the monitor program, which I'll cover in a future episode, but here's a quick sneak peek. Thanks for joining me on this journey. In summary, I've added the necessary components and code to communicate with the retro computer. For compatibility's sake, I chose the 6551 ACIA and wrote a few short lines of code to read and write to the console. Up next, we're going to integrate a priority interrupt encoder. Excited about what lies ahead? Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and brace yourself for the upcoming episodes of 6309 Unleashed, 8-Bits, and Beyond.